Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in. My name is Brian Ramos and I'm the Director of Experiential Learning here at NYU Stern. And today we're here to talk about the Fashion and Luxury MBA. And to help me with that, I'm here with two amazing students from our inaugural class of the Fashion and Luxury MBA, Allison Reiner and Christian Troutwine. Thank you guys for joining me. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Why don't you guys uh, start by telling us a little bit about kind of what you were doing before Stern um, and what you're hoping to do post Stern um, with your MBA? Sure, yeah. So I had a lot of um, uh, experience in retail and fashion beforehand. So I worked at Walmart e-commerce in the buying division. Um, and then I also worked at Bonobos, which is a menswear startup. Um, they're famous for being one of the first digitally native brands. Um, so I felt like I had the right mix of uh, online and in-store experience. Um, and wanted to take that to Stern to make sure that I was getting the right managerial skills. Um, and after, I'd like to make sure that I start to create my own brand um, and go into the entrepreneurial space. Great. Allie? Um, before Stern, I'd always worked in, in the fashion industry ever since undergrad graduation. I've worked in a variety of departments from supply chain, and most recently I was at Ralph Lauren doing sales and merchandising for an international division. Mm -hmm. So. Why I wanted to go to business school was to sort of hone in more on those analytical and business skills to help me switch into a more strategic role that will involve business development, global expansion, and sales. That's great. So, you know, so many uh, prospective students tuning in, how did you find this program? It was brand new. Mm -hmm. um, where did you Where did you find it? Yeah, so, I mean, I was dead set on going to business school, um, and I was, for me, it was, NYU was definitely at the top of the list. I'm from New York City. It's, it's world renowned around the world. Um, so when I was on the site, I was looking at the two year program and I happened to find this fashion and luxury program. And that's the industry that I'm in. And having already known that I wanted to go into the entrepreneurial space in the fashion world, it was a perfect fit for me. Um, so it ended up being a no brainer. Great. I had a, a less traditional <laughs> approach. I was already studying for the GMAT and looking at MBA programs kind of having a hard time of figuring out something that really jumped out to me. And my mom actually sent me the pro link to the program in about August 2017 and said, look, Allie, they made NYU made a program for you. <laughs> so I looked into it more, and it, she was right. It literally, the description fit me perfectly, and it just seemed like it would be a great match. That's great. It's great to hear kind of your, your process, uh, how you're looking into business schools. One thing that I can foresee some other prospective students is as they kind of look into uh, full-time programs is mm -hmm. kind of weighing you know, the fashion and luxury focused MBA over kind of a, a, a two-year um, traditional kind of model. How did you guys go about that, um, that yeah. decision process? Yeah, for me, it, was, it really came down to three different things. Um, you know, the traditional MBA is a two-year program. This is a one-year program, and you're you're getting that full experience. So for me, it was the, about the opportunity cost of being out of the workforce and and the trade-off between you know salary and things like that and experiences in the workplace. Um, secondly, it's in the heart of the fashion world in New York City. There's so much exposure. Um, the program has done such a great job in connecting us with industry leaders um, and making sure that we're getting the right kind of exposure. Um, and thirdly, it's a focused MBA program in the, in the way that I knew I wanted to go back into this industry. With that said, it doesn't necessarily have to be somebody with experience in that background. Um, just, the, just to know that I knew I didn't want to be like a, switching careers into consulting or into finance or into investment banking or something like that. Great. I also had three major points. One to jump on Christians is the one year time frame is I think extremely important in the retail environment right now. Everything is changing very rapidly. So the ability to come into Stern, get those skills and get those criteria that you need to make an impact and go back as quickly as possible is a huge advantage. Um, the second really for me was the mini internships, I call it. So we have Stern Solutions or, or our immersion classes that happen three times throughout our program. And we work in a small group of four to five people, one-on-one -on -one with a company, um, working directly with their board of directors, CEO, like PR, marketing, all of their top executives, and have an end deliverable that we present to them at the end of the semester. And having three different opportunities to do that, so working with three different types of companies in three different potential functions, I think gives you a much more wide, a wider variety of sort of industry things that you're trying out. So I thought that was really a very unique experience. And then um, lastly, again, what Christian said is, is the connections, which I have to say is my biggest pleasant surprise from actually being in the program. I, I knew that we had a very good network here yeah. at Stern, but the amount of connections and resources that are available to us really blew me away. So Definitely. that's been a, a great strength. 
That's great. Well, you brought up my favorite topic, experiential <laughs> learning, or at, at Stern, as we call it, Stern Solutions. Yep. Um, so day one, we kind of threw you guys in, into kind of New York City yeah. ecosystem through our immersion class. Mm -hmm. um, Want to ask you guys, what was maybe your, one of your favorite classes over the summer? If you could talk a little bit about that. Sure, yeah, absolutely. So one of the situations, it was actually towards more of the end of the summer, but we, um, we worked with the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Um, and we were all tasked with a high-level project in terms of re revamping their brand and, and working with their team there. Mm -hmm. um, so we worked across functionally with people in different departments at the Met, and it was a weekly basis. We were meeting with their team, um, and we were working in small little teams together, and it all culminated in a project um, and a presentation at the Met um, in front of their staff, in front of their um, board of directors. And for us, it was, for me, it was a very you know, enlightening experience, you know, high-level presentation. Um, really getting into the guts and brand positioning of a of a of a really like luxurious brand. You don't necessarily think of that in, in when you think of fashion and, and luxury, but it really is. And mm -hmm. for me, it was a different paradigm to look at it through. So it's great. How about you, Ali? So we all worked on the Met project in separate groups, so that was a great experience. Um, in the fall semester, what we're in currently, I'm working with La Sports Sac mm -hmm. and doing a project for them, and it's been great so far. We've gone to their up to their offices in Midtown three times already, and we're sitting in their showroom, meeting directly with uh, their director of PR and marketing. We've met with several other people. We are walking around the office. It's we're mini consultants. It's like they've almost hired us to be there, um, and so that hands-on exposure of being in that office and getting all of the information. I'm mean, really working on a project that's not just set up for business school students but is a real-time issue for them yeah. is you know the most integrated you can be in the in the industry while still being in school Absolutely. yeah you know I think through these projects a lot of, of students um, you know typically go into them you know hoping to build up a skill or to, to flex a new skill it's a um, kind of a unique opportunity to mm -hmm. were there was there a specific a skill set as you were going into the the Met project or as you were going to the sports sac mm -hmm. project that you um, were hoping to kind of build up through that experience yeah I, I think for me it was it was talking about market segmentation yeah. if you want to want to do buzzwords of, for business yeah. school um, but understanding how to how to directly market towards a sec towards a different kind of segment or a specific group uh, for me that's something that I didn't hadn't really thought through I would come from a buying and, and merchandising background um, and for me really being able to understand and position a brand in a way that you know it makes it more attractive to a certain subset of, or group and you know through this project I really think I got that exposure okay so one of the huge goals I have for business school in general that I hope to work on through these projects and in you know my electives in the fashion and luxury program is my finance skills, mm -hmm. sort of enhancing those. So in these projects, I've gotten access to, you know, obviously internal data, but looking at their P&Ls and really understanding what's happening from a financial standpoint and how that's impacting the business is experience that I didn't have in the working world, so something that I want to work on so I can bring it back with me. Yeah, I'll add on to that and I'll say, while we have been, like the, the emphasis has been on the fashion and luxury space throughout the entire process, there's been a lot of emphasis on finance and marketing and that's like, kind of like the what's, what's held true throughout the entire process. So those are really underlying things throughout of any business school experience, so I think you're still getting a lot of the meat and the, like the guts of a, of a business school experience within that, within that sphere as well. Yeah, so. I think one of the unique parts about this program is really kind of industry is at the core uh, of kind of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. um, how has it been um, engaging with the Fashion and Luxury Council, mm -hmm. um, some of the other visits that we had, um, had uh, visited over sure. the summer? Um, what has that been like? Do you actually get to speak to these people or <laughs> is it just like in name only? Yeah, <laughs> so it was a surprise to us actually at the beginning, but a great surprise in the sense that we all got individual mentors that were... Very impressive. Um, Jeff, Jeff Carr, Professor Jeff Carr, um, set us up with an ind individual mentor throughout the entire semester or throughout the entire year to help us with career or advice or uh, what have you. Um, but we, in addition, we also got to meet um, industry leaders from Salvatore Ferragamo, uh, Carolina Herrera, um, and just sitting through and, and listening to their president speak and talk about their experiences was enlightening. So I think you know there, there's a couple layers there in the sense that the individual mentor that's an ongoing kind of process where you know I've met with my mentor a couple of times. Um, we're working through you know different job kind of angles and the entrepreneurship angle because that's a little bit tricky um, in, in the sense of where to go. Yeah. Um, but I think the other layer is is the sense that we're, we're we went you know on Friday afternoons we went to Salvador Ferragamo and and Herrera and then we went to um, there was a couple others um, Joe Ferrara's office as well. Yep. So great. a lot of great experiences. Great. So like I said earlier, you know the connections 
exceeded my wildest expectations. Mm -hmm. So as Christian said, we're all set up with a mentor. And I, I, I get blushed when I say this, but I got the CEO of Tommy Hilfiger, which is crazy. Like I have his cell phone number, which, you know, I say to prospective students, like that, pretty that's cool. crazy. He's a famous person. <laughs> so I've met with him a few times and it's just the ability that I even got that meeting, let alone have an ongoing connection with him is something that I never could have gotten if it wasn't Absolutely. for Stern. So yes, the mentorships and, you know, Fridays in the summer, all of our immersion solution classes has been great. But another element is also our adjunct professors. Right now we have a class with Jack Hanlon, who's the VP of analytics at jet.com. Mm. And he teaches us on Tuesday nights retail analytics and strategy. And you know, he'll come in and be like, you know what, this I have a problem at work today that happened. You know, can you got, do you have any ideas to help me out? Um, and just getting that perspective from someone who's currently really in, in the industry, teaching us what he uses on a day-to-day -day mm -hmm. basis has been so great. Absolutely. Great. Yeah. So let's take a let's take a step back from academics and experiential learning. I think a whole other piece of kind of the MBA experience, mm -hmm. and including the fashion and luxury MBA, is um, the community. Um, and so, want to just ask you a little bit about kind of like what's your, been your experience uh, engaging with the Stern community, um, you know, over the summer, now in the fall. Um, how does that How yeah. does that look like? Yeah, so for, for me, I'll take it from two angles. Um, in the summer, it was, uh, obviously, we were the only students, really, the full-time students present. Mm -hmm. um, but immediately, I, I think we all felt that there was such a community and, and support behind us, you know, from the Fashion and Luxury Council to the entire admissions and, and experiential learning, you know, kind of community that was there to support this program because it was important for, for us to get it off the ground and, mm -hmm. and, you know, along with the tech program as well. Um, and then I'll take it from you know from the students when when we came on campus in September, which can be like a little bit of a shock when you have you know 800 students come <laughs> come back when you thought you owned the building for, for a little bit. Um, and it, it's been, they they've been nothing but welcoming uh, welcoming uh, welcoming us because they know like it's it's for the greater st good of the Stern community. Yeah. Um, additionally, I'll I'll speak to the luxury and retail club, which yeah. is a, a club on campus that's great and. Um, you know, really advocates for kind of the, the, the program and, and for us. Um, and they were welcoming and they actually, I think they appointed 10 different VP positions for us, um, you know, in, in terms of us coming on board because they were, you know, they were impressed with our experience. Um, so they have been super welcoming for us. Oh, yeah, great. I think it's been great. You know, as Christian mentioned in the summer, it was just the tech program and the fashion and luxury program here. Yeah. So we had full exposure to all the resources Stern had. So that's the Office of Career Development, Office of Student Engagement. And we were able to build one-on-one -on -one personal relationships with them, being one of a small group of students on campus. And to be able to translate that relationship throughout the year is going to be really valuable. And you know, we see each other in the hallway, and we recognize each other's face, and we get coffee. And just to get a jump start on building those intimate connections was really helpful and more again to the to the club stern has i think something that's really unique about the stern community is that it's so student run you'll see a lot of things in the admissions about iq and eq and that's emotional intelligence is also supplemented with your intellectual intelligence and something that really you know drew me did the stern community that i thought was just a fun fact is that stern in person interviews every single person that ends up attending Stern. So in a way, it's sort of like a hand-picked community. And it really does shine through. All the clubs are student-run. If there isn't a club that is there, even though we have 70 to 80, so it's kind of hard to believe. <laughs> bunch, yeah. But if there isn't a club, you can create one. You know, student initiatives are happening all the time. And I just think that that's a very empowering environment to be a part of. Yeah. And Ali, you um, are, are one of the, the, the student leaders um, of the program. How has that experience been? Um, obviously, start the <laughs> program uh, first year. Um, how has that been it's, a partner with the administration? It's been great. And again, one of the reasons that drew me to this program was because it was smaller. I thought that I was going to have more exposure and leadership opportunities. Mm -hmm. So I've really taken advantage of that. And you know, as Christian said, the rest of the student government board and everyone on campus has been so welcoming yeah. and really wanting to, you know, include us in everything. We're not a siloed part. You know, we have classes with the MBA twos mm -hmm. and we are really just one in the greater Stern community with just classes that are a little more focused and some different experiences. But they've really welcomed up us with open arms, especially the luxury and retail club, mm -hmm. offering up all those positions on the board for us to get more involved has just been really That's nice. Great. Yeah. So dare I say, I think you guys are almost halfway through. Oh, um, no, so not what too has fast. been? <laughs> been going too fast. What has uh, what has been your favorite 
moment so far? <sighs> uh, could be class-wise, could be out of class remarks, could be New York City-wise. What's, what's been your favorite experience? We've made, honestly, we've made such good friends with everyone yeah, yeah. in such close. a short period of time because <laughs> we're such a small group. It, it's yeah. really crazy. We had a, a little break in between summer and coming back for the fall, and mm -hmm. we had only known each other for two and a half months then, but people were going to Croatia together. They went yeah. to Spain, and it's just, you know, I have a suitcase here. I'm going to Mexico City with a few girls in my program in a few hours. <laughs> so it, just the, the relationships that we've built um, people are coming from so many different backgrounds, so many different countries. Um, it's been has been really special. Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll, I'll echo that as well. Um, you know, it's just like we're so close and so tight knit, and most of the classes are either tw I think it was you know twenty to sixty people, depending on if we took it with tech. Um, so just like the connections and like the ability to like the tight knit community, like within Stern's tight knit community, just like helps support us even more. Uh, additionally, I will just reflect back on the the experiential initiatives that we've had yeah. with the Met. I think that was a super valuable experience. Right now, I'm working with a startup brand, yeah. and for me, that's continually like a really interesting kind of like experience that's happening for me, um, especially wanting to go back into that startup space and entrepreneur space. A lot of people think that the luxury and retail community, it's like it's a very old and kind of um, mm. there's like a lot of legend behind it. But, you know, there's also like a lot of up and coming and disruptive brands. It's a very buzzword, but it's a very disruptive industry as well. So there's a lot of space for people to come and play in, in, in different kinds of capacities. So. Looking ahead, what's your what are you most looking forward to? Yeah. I'm most looking forward to not graduating I can go, I can go, I can go. and having fun here. Um, we're going to Milan yeah. in January. It's, it's very exciting. You yeah. can't really beat yeah. that. So that's going to be incredible. I know we have uh, company visits already set up yep. and all the connections Stern has there. Yep. And just, you know, again, another city we get to explore as a group um, and also learn in one of the, the hearts of the fashion world in Europe is going to be really, really cool. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll echo that again. <laughs> Milan is like, what it's, it's a pretty nice draw yeah. <laughs> uh, um, for the winter. But I will say also that the, we do have, so we have core classes each yeah. Um, each semester for the retail and luxury club as well, or retail and luxury program as well. Yeah. Um, and there's some really interesting classes that we have. We have next generation fi uh, f fashion, and there's um, luxury marketing. So there's yeah. there's also different options for us to take and kind of mix and match of where we want to go. And then I think it's one of the great things about this is that we also get to have exposure to a lot of the classes that only MBA twos would be able to take. So there's different things, um, you know, like uh, entrepreneurial finance or just really like yeah. kind of like very specific courses. So not specific to um, fashion luxury, but the ability that this program allows us to have. Yeah, so, like yeah. at the end of the day, it's an MBA. Mm -hmm. um, and to have those elective courses to, you know, as I said earlier, I want to really work on enhancing my finance skills. So Absolutely. I think we're actually both taking valuation. valuation with, yeah. So, you know, having <laughs> that. It's going to be challenging, but it's going That's to be here, right? it's going to be great. Yeah, so just being able to take advantage of everything Stern has, and what I always you know say to like our classmates is, there are endless, endless, endless resources here, and everyone wants to help you. It's just a matter of using those resources because mm -hmm. they're ex they're extensive beyond belief. Yeah. Um, and you know, just coming from the summer, you can really see that all the faculty, the professors, the administration, they're so excited about this they program. Yeah. And they've really helped to sort of tailor all of their classes. Like even in a finance class, mm -hmm. we did a case study. She made it about like a department store. You know, mm -hmm. everyone has their little touch yeah. um, to tweak and refine to keep this focus. And just feels like we have like a whole team behind us. Yeah, so it's been really nice. It's been really awesome all the support that we've like, including the professors and and, and like like I mentioned earlier, like the different the different functions and things like yeah. that. That it's like this is something that really makes sense. And like if you're not going to do it 100, percent then yeah. don't do it. And Absolutely. we're doing it 100, yeah. percent which is great. Totally. So, looking back to you as a prospective student. Mm -hmm. Um, if there was one piece of advice that you could give um, to all prospective students out there now, mm -hmm. um, what would what would be um, that advice? Well, I'm sure there's a lot of students out there that are perhaps not in the fashion industry right now or in the luxury industry. And I would say, you know, we have a lot of people within our program that are from finance, that are from consulting, that come from different functions that don't necessarily align with the fashion industry but they're still here because they're really interested. Mm -hmm. And we just want people that are really passionate about the industry, that really want to be here. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it would be don't be dissuaded by the fact that you're not, you don't have the background for mm -hmm. fashion. That's not a prerequisite for this. It's more about the passion and, and the ability to, to kind of like execute on that. 
Great. And I would say just back to the community. The community here is so strong, and I think something that's really unique to Stern. It's hard to describe it in words, but it's just a feeling you get when you come on campus and the way people interact with each other and, you know, just the comfort level and trust that everyone has. So I would say, you know, in your application and if you are accepted to to interview or invited to interview, just let your personality shine through. Show how you're going to contribute to the community. You know, you have options to be creative in your essay and your pick six, use them in your, inter <laughs> you know, in your interview, like show, show who you are as a person because that is something that Stern values, which I think is, is unique in the MBA process. Definitely. Well, thank you both for uh, Thanks, sharing Brian. your experiences. Thank you, yeah. um, and thank you all for tuning in. If you have any additional questions or looking for more information on the Fashion Luxury MBA, please uh, look into the website at the bottom of your screen.